good morning everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today in this video we're going to give you a few tips and tricks on how to get your um, the most out of your day at Legoland. So we're here at the park now, it's quarter past nine, opens about ten but we should open it a little bit early. So let's head on in and see what we can do today. Let's go! So tip number one is definitely get here early. It's already about quarter past nine, park opens in 45 minutes, it's starting to get busy. So get here early so you can get in early. Yeah, it's helping me to let go. Get in early so you can enjoy the park to its fullest. So tip number two is to make sure you to do the rides that you really want to do first. Because obviously uh, throughout the day as the weather and stuff changes, particularly here in the UK, rides can shut down, they can stop operating, or just general maintenance reasons and what have you, they can go down. So obviously whatever rides you really want to do, get them done early in the day. That way you know they're done, ticked off, and you avoid any disappointment later on. We've been in the park already for about 20 minutes, done two of the big coasters, and now we can go head off and do other attractions knowing that we've done you know, two of the big rides here already. So that's tip number two for you. Tip number three is don't forget your Merlin Pass discount. So at stalls like this behind me, like Man Coffee, where you get hot drinks, soft drinks, you know, pastries and stuff like that, you can get Merlin Pass discount. You can also get that at a lot of the shops here and restaurants. Just remember to scan your um, annual pass or ask a stand, uh, staff member and they'll give you the discount. So handy tip there is you can save 20% then as well, which all adds up to your savings throughout the year. But easily forgotten, that's tip number three for you. So tip number four is to start at the back of the park in terms of rides. So rather than do the attractions you come to first when you come into the park, try and make your way towards the back of the park when it opens, because generally people tend to go for the stuff that they see first. So we headed to Dragon and Dragon's Apprentice, got straight on because there was no one else there. Now we're heading to Mythica, which is the back of the uh, park as well. And again, hopefully we should get straight on the skyline. So that's tip number four, head towards the back of the park uh, first, because then when everyone's done those rides uh, and they're the front, you can make your way there and I'll sit in and I'll do those on the way out but that's tip number four. So as you can notice as we make our way towards Mythica it's really really quiet at the minute because everyone is doing the rides that they come to first and what have you in the kind of the mini land low uh, mini land zone so we're obviously now heading towards Mythica which is going to be a little bit quieter and then when everyone's done the rides that are kind of um, by the entrance to the park we'll do those on our way out so we kind of skip all the big queues and obviously head to this zone while it's reasonably quiet. Is perfect for when you're in queues, and that is bring some snacks and drinks in a little rucksack. Because that way, when the little ones like Oliver now get a little bit peckish, they can have a snack, and you can do it while you're in the queue. So it's a good way of killing time when you're in the queue, and obviously kind of just topping up their energy and what have you. So that's tip number five: bring some snacks and drinks so you can kill some time in the queue, and obviously uh, save a little bit of money as well from buying the snacks here at the park. But we're going to stand now in the queue for later ages, have a snack, and then go on the ride in just a few minutes. So the next tip for your day at Legoland uh, Windsor Resort is to use the Legoland app. So I'm going to show you a little bit about it now. But it's a really, really useful tool to find out about queue times, restaurants, food, opening times, all that kind of stuff. So I'll show you the app now, what the current queue times are. But it's really useful to use throughout your day to know obviously where's best next to head in terms of ride times or opening for restaurants and stuff. But let's check it out now. So when you open up the Legoland app, you can obviously log in and it will show you different bits about um, the park. So it will show you your map and where you currently are. So there you go, it will show you uh, where you are in relation to all the rides and attractions. It will also give you information down the bottom here about queues. So this is the kind of queues as we approach an hour into opening. So you've got, um, you know, five minutes for some of the smaller attractions. Um, you know, the Dragon there, quite a big coaster, five minutes. And down towards the bottom is the busiest stuff. So Flight of the Skyline, which is a, you know, brand new, quite popular attraction attraction 60 minutes but that's still not outrageous for it but another really useful thing is it tells you how far it is from your current position so as you can see it's a three minute walk or Ninjago for example is a three minute walk Dragon's Apprentice is six minute and if you click on the ride you can then look at the um, restrictions on here in terms of what times it opens as well as the ride restrictions in terms of the height and what have you but on the map tool it will tell you where it is in relation to you and it gives you an idea obviously then of which direction you want to, to head if you're going to go onto it. The My Visit tab has information about your tickets and plans for the day. Shopping obviously uh, is information about short breaks, reserve and ride, which is your kind of fast pass, one day tickets, VIP experiences and stuff. And then on the Info tab, it just gives you stuff about park hours, rentals, all sorts of bits and bobs. But it's a really handy app. Definitely worth checking, uh, checking it out throughout your day as it's got lots of really useful features to help, um, useful features, sorry, to help make your day a little bit smoother. So um, my next tip, I think it's tip number seven now, is with regards to 
to food and lunch. Now usually at these parks, between about 11 o'clock and 12 o'clock is when the places start to open. So for example, the um, pizza and pasta place behind me is actually opening at 12. Some of the kind of grab and go like chicken places and stuff are opening at 11 or 11.30. So um, my kind of tip for that would be to go and get lunch early. Generally when people kind of have lunch here in the UK, it's anywhere from kind of 12 to about 2 o'clock. If you get it a little bit earlier, it'll be quiet. You can go in, grab your food straight away, and obviously go out and enjoy all the rides and stuff while everyone else is having their lunch a little bit later. If you leave your lunch till kind of one o'clock, generally the restaurants are starting to get busy, so you've got a little bit of a wait for food. And obviously, when you come out of there, everyone's finished lunch and the rides are really busy again. So that's my next tip: is to grab lunch early, or alternatively, do what we've done and just bring a packed lunch. Because obviously, you can sit down and have a bit of a picnic anytime, anywhere you want when you're ready, and obviously just enjoy your lunch and save a little bit of money as well. But that's my next tip here for Legoland. So the next tip is about the freestyle drink. So you can get these freestyle cups at various locations throughout the park, including this uh, Treads Tuning Cafe over here. And then you'll see these refresh refill stations around the park. You can also now buy them, I know it's through the um, Coca-Cola uh, vending machine just here, but uh, you can buy them throughout the park. It's about 16 pound with that discount. If you get the discount, it's about 12 pounds to activate it. And then when you bring it back the next time, you can activate it for about eight pound. And that gives you unlimited fizzy drinks throughout the day. But that's a handy tip for you to save on some you know money on drinks and stuff particularly if there's a large family you can come over here get one of the freestyle cups and then you can also use it throughout your day here at legoland and bring it next time with you as well to get a discount and save on buying the cup again so my next tip is actually about the hill train now the hill train is it means here at legoland of getting up and down obviously the hill and um, that kind of gets you to kind of the top of the park where the entrance is down towards the bottom where you've got all the rides and attractions now at the start of the day when it's running it's usually quite busy to come down because people want to take it as opposed to walking but i can highly recommend if you're able to walk here to just come straight down as in the morning you get ahead of everyone else waiting for the train that means that you can get onto the rides and the attractions quicker likewise if you leave the park a little bit earlier maybe say now about half two three o'clock you know a few hours before close you can get up to the top really really easily whereas if you leave it towards park close the queue for the train is going to be really busy because everyone wants to go back up to the top to save walking up the hill so that's just a handy daily tip there when the hill train is running just make sure you kind of do it going back up the hill as opposed to coming down and try and get it a little bit earlier So I was hoping to go on the sky ride with Oliver, but unfortunately at the minute it seems to be down. It was running earlier, but it's not now for whatever reason. Um, but that brings me on to uh, my next tip now, which is obviously make sure that if there's anything that is a must do for you, whether it's skyline or coasters, make sure that it's actually running when you come to the park. Obviously some things, uh, things go down during the day, but quite often a lot of the time, things are shut for longer periods for annual maintenance. So all of that information is on the Legoland website prior to you coming, so you can see if anything's down for a long period due to refurbishment and stuff like that but definitely worth checking just to make sure that you don't miss any of your must-do attractions so another tip for Legoland is when you're at the start of the day and you're at the top of the hill and get let in, have a game plan for where you're heading. I mentioned earlier about obviously going to the kind of attractions further afield in the park, because generally people always go to the first thing they find, and that is definitely true um, in the case in Pavu. So I always kind of venture towards either Duplo Valley or down towards Mythica or even Dragon and stuff, because that way you can do all the stuff that's far away and then kind of work your way back towards the exit of the park, as opposed to kind of starting here at the front and then working your way out where things are going to get really busy. But um, you can either go left here past the tram station and I've already touched on about how obviously you should avoid the tram to go down unless you really need to just because it will be really busy and will delay you getting down towards the rides but you can go down to the left here which takes you through Miniland and then Diplo Valley or down to the right just behind me here which takes you down towards the Viking area and then Dragon so just kind of have a look at the map and get a game plan before you visit to know which way to head. So if you head left down there past Iron Man that takes you down towards Diplo Valley in Miniland or if you go right past the Dragon and past the Lego shop just down this pathway just down here that takes you towards the Viking area and the Dragon area. So my final tip then for Legoland, if you can, is to leave a little bit early. Now we're fortunate that because we're pass holders, we can just come back another day throughout the season. So we tend to leave a little bit early than someone who's maybe paid full price and obviously done like a four hour drive down. But if you can leave early, as you'll see now, the car park becomes nice and dead quiet. You can leave straight away, get out onto the roads, no problem. And obviously hopefully beat a little bit of traffic as well. Whereas if you stay until close, all of a sudden you've got everyone in the park trying to leave and it gets really busy. So if you are able to leave early, I definitely recommend it. It. if not obviously you will get out as quick as you possibly can so um yeah 
that's the kind of final tip for the video. If you are new to the channel, please hit that subscribe button down below. I hope these tips have helped you out. Um, that's going to be all for this video. Many thanks for watching, and we will see you in the next one.